This is probably the best news we could have today. Gold and silver standing firm and standing strong after a couple of days of a fairly solid rally. We'll talk about where the prices are now and two stocks that have just exploded in the past couple of days. We'll discuss the dynamics of all of this as we explore. Now, these two stocks, if you want to call one of them a stock, it's really a commodity price, uh, really have nothing to do with silver and gold, at least not immediately. But nonetheless, the stock market, uh, everything is kind of interrelated somehow in some way, especially with silver is industrial demand. Stock prices on some things can have an effect on silver's price. In fact, some people took that to the extreme during the uh, silver squeeze movement back in 2021. It's hard to believe it's been over two years since that has occurred. But nonetheless, they thought that they could do the same thing to AMD stock and GameStop stock as they could with silver. They learned the hard way. They learned fairly quickly that it just wasn't happening with silver. It's way too complex of a market. But let's talk about the prices of gold and silver today. If you enjoy videos like this where I do talk about the news with precious metals, I hope you will consider subscribing to the channel and pressing the thumbs up button. And let me know if you're a new subscriber, by the way, down below so I can properly thank you. I do appreciate all the new folks that pop by. I am trying to grow the channel. But as much as, or maybe even a little bit more, I appreciate everyone else who have stuck with me for so long on this channel. So gold, it's like a red green. It's like Christmas on the Kitco charts. Gold is green. It's up 80 cents, 0.04%. Uh, actually, the market just before closing, it popped up. A dollar ten now to one thousand nine hundred seventeen dollars and fifty cents. That's a point oh six percent increase. Silver is down twenty cents. It's in the red. Point eight two percent drop to twenty four dollars and twenty cents, holding the line above that twenty four dollar level. Platinum is up five dollars and palladium is down forty bucks. And rhodium is up fifty dollars. So it's red. It's green, red, green, red, green. It's like Christmas there at Kitco, but nonetheless. That's just the colors, but uh, they're, for all intents and purposes, not big movements at all for either metal. So they're really holding the line in anticipation of what's coming tomorrow, Friday. They're lower a little bit, but these traders are waiting the marketplace event of the week, if not the whole month. The annual Federal Reserve Symposium held in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. The ECB is also meeting there as well, too. And it will get underway in hours from right now. Um, the meeting usually produces some market-sensitive news from world central bankers, comments including Fed Chair Jerome Powell. Powell is scheduled to speak at the uh, CONFAB on Friday morning, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. So stay tuned for that to see what happens. And I won't be able to post a video in time because I'll be at work. But nonetheless, U.S. stock indexes are lower today. But here's one stock that's up big time. NVIDIA's knockout earnings and guidance reports that we just got, according to Nigel Green, the CEO of DeVere Group, artificial intelligence is not just the future, it's the present, and all investors need some exposure to it. But there's much more than just this one California-based megatech company. The chip maker beat estimates and said sales will jump another 170% this quarter due to soaring demand for AI chips. Shares in NVIDIA jumped 6% on the earnings and guidance, which came after the closing bell yesterday. NVIDIA is the darling of the AI boom. Of this, there is no doubt. And with robust guidance, we expect this to continue for most of the rest of the year, according to Green. Investors who are serious about building their long-term wealth need exposure to this pivotal driver of innovation, competitiveness, and profitability across almost all industries. We're all still in the beginning of the AI age, and investors should not miss out on having an early advantage. Almost everyone should have the investment exposure to AI as part of the mix, and that sounds like a pretty big uh, you know, uh, pitch for NVIDIA stock. And you know, if you're in that, uh, that world, that's something to look into, and he may be right. But the reason why this may very well could be related to precious metals, folks, is because 
Um, I think it's only a matter of time before we see AI involved in trading. And it will happen so quick and so fast and using logic and that's artificial uh, that can move the prices up and down. I'm going to talk about manipulation. Well, that's how it could be done. You implement AI tools for your in investment and trading, and that includes precious metals. And of course, we all know, going back to our early ages of, of, of basic computing, garbage in, garbage out. You know, there's AI like ChatGPT that has a political bias. And it's a political bias that is uh, wrapped around the administrative state in one particular uh, political party. Uh, so depending on your political point of view, well, that might be considered garbage. So what spits out of chat GPT will definitely indeed be based off of that bias. And trading mechanisms and trading algorithms very well could be enhanced with artificial intelligence powered by NVIDIA chips. So there is kind of a relation there. Relation there. Uh, now, we also have the BRICS meeting um, this week. Uh, China President Xi Jinping was a no-show for a scheduled speech. Um, broke SP Angel says that in an email dispatch, we wonder what economic disaster Xi was having to address while missing his speech. China is in trouble economically, and there's also kind of a war footing going on there with Taiwan and stuff happening in the South China Sea that's not really being talked about in the media as much as it should. But nonetheless, so there is where we are at. Now, what is this other stock or this other commodity that is exploding right now? Uh, and it may not necessarily be related to silver, but it's pork bellies. Now, you probably have not heard about pork belly stocks um, much in recent years. In fact, for those of you who may be old enough to remember, there is a movie called Trading Places where they talked about pork bellies. Yes, indeed. So what's behind this? Well, essentially, it's about supply and demand for pork, you know, and, uh, and you know, the combination of killing about 10% more hogs and live weights um, being about 2% heavier. Uh, pork bellies in storage, about 34% above last year. It's the highest level since 1971. So you have an increase in, well, essentially bacon. Retail bacon prices keep climbing in spite of increased hogs and heavier hogs and give you more pork belly. According to uh, an individual here, USDA's Gary Crawford said, while belly prices are down slightly, they are being propped up by growing consumer demand for bacon. People like bacon. Yes, indeed, bacon's in everything. It can be even in drinks, a pair with chocolate, fruit, and all sorts of different things. People just love bacon. And so, you know, and that's just it. Demand for anything, it's supply, demand, fundamentals. They're making more bacon, but the demand, they're not making enough to keep up with demand. And uh, so it's pretty, pretty amazing. This is a 17-year high for pork bellies, newsworthy. And the same thing could happen with silver. In fact, it really did, not necessarily in the spot price, but the premiums that we were paying for our silver products and greatly increased in the last couple of years. So there is sort of a correlation there. Understanding those uh, fundamentals with these other two stocks exploding in price uh, should give you some a little bit of a perspective. And in the end, you know, what is about pork bellies and other commodities? Well, there are commodities. Silver and gold, in a sense, should be looked at as commodities. They fluctuate based off supply demand fundamentals. But in the end, over the long course of time, what uh, separates gold and silver from any other commodity out there and any other stock or other derivative is the fact that they are stable stores of wealth uh, that have value that is recognized above and beyond price. When we recognize that and understand that as accumulators of these metals, we should remind ourselves of that, and which, which is why I try to mention it uh, many times in my videos, is that value is something different than price. And uh, it's a long-term proposition for both metals, but especially silver, because you're taking a little bit more of a risk when you stack silver uh, because of the premiums you pay and the wilder fluctuations in spot price. But in the end, it all comes out in a wash, uh, leaving you with wealth preservation in the long run. And besides, not only that, but there's the added benefit of having a financial asset, an actual hard asset that has been recognized for thousands of years outside of the monetary and the banking system. 
I mean, they are monetary after all, even though they are commodity money. Indeed, they have the attributes, I believe, of a sound uh, value proposition, store of value uh, that uh, stores it and holds it, holds it in storage. Because there's two different kinds of value uh, that we have to think about, folks. A store of value can leak. Yes, that's right. Just think of a boat. A boat is very valuable uh, if you are in water and you don't feel like swimming, especially if you're out so far away from shore that you couldn't swim to shore. A boat, a boat is very valuable, right? Especially if it doesn't leak. But does the boat lose value when it leaks? A little bit of a leak here and there. Yes, it loses value, but it is still a store of value. Are you going to jump out of the boat for a small leak in it? No, you're not. That's the dollar, folks. That's the dollar. The dollar is a store of value that's like a leaking boat. And just, uh, you know, we don't want the leak to get, but the leak is not so big. Uh, the hole is not so big in the, in the boat that it's going to sink uh, completely. And, and, the, and right now the Federal Reserve has got a couple of buckets and they're trying to, to take that water and dump it out. People do that in boats. If there's a leak in your boat, you're going to get buckets of water uh, in the boat and throw it over shore to try to plug that and try to plug the leak if you can. Uh, now the Federal Reserve, they don't care about plugging the leak. And they're fine with a with a little pinhole or a, a, a 2% pinhole. Um, and that's exactly what's happening there. But nonetheless, uh, gold and silver are holding the line. We'll see what happens. We have other uh, metrics that are coming out, I believe, tomorrow, employment um, statistics. We'll keep an eye on those. It'll be a fairly interesting day tomorrow. Let me know what your thoughts are about this uh, content today. I hope you found this video informative and insightful. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to all of you for taking the time to watch this video and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.